Alrighty, Lumberjacks, welcome back. And today we're going to be going over the operation of the loader. Um, this is one of my absolute favorite things to do, and there's a lot of different techniques, so we're going to try to cover the basics and maybe a few advanced stuff um, for all of you. So the loader's job is loading the logs from the ground that you've cut with the processor onto the trucks themselves, the logging trucks, and getting them ready to go back to the mill. So before we start playing with the loader, let's go to our uh, logging truck. So we're going to tab through here till we find our truck. So here's our truck here. Now, originally when we first started the series, we purchased the hay rack uh, logging trailer. So this one has a whole bunch of stakes. So each one of these is called a bunk, which is this little kind of fork that sticks up. And then each individual piece is called a stake. So two stakes per bunk if that makes sense, if you guys want to know the terminology. So basically, this one has uh, three sets of full bunks. So it's got one set here, one set here, and one set here. Now, you can fit short logs on these individual bunks, or you can just lay long logs into the full thing. It's really up to you how you want to load. There's no exact science to it. Um, as you play, you'll determine what you like best and what works for you. So let's back right up to this uh, trailer here and hook on. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to bring this uh, trailer out to the area where we were working. So what we want to do is we want to bring it right up to the loader here, and then we're going to stop, and I'm going to show you guys positioning for the loader itself and how that works. Okay, so here we are at our site. So we're going to park our truck here and forget about it for a minute. Now, another problem that a lot of people have is determining where to park the machines uh, for working, for loading. How do I do it? I don't know where to go. Um, I get that a lot from people. So for parking the loader, it's not exactly always going to be exactly the same. You're always going to have uh, moments where you're in different spots. But the idea is you want to park close to your pile in a way that's the, the best way to utilize um, your area. So in this case, I'm going to hop in the loader, and I'm actually going to park it right on the end of my pile. So I generally park it about, about here. That's usually a good spot. That way you're able to see your pile in front of you, and you can see your logging truck that's coming uh, kind of towards you. All right? So I park generally about here. Um, one thing that you can do before the truck even arrives, if your pile's kind of wonky, like you can see they kind of aren't really lined up, you can use your grapple to push against the sides to kind of straighten your pile out a little bit and get it off the road so that the driver is not going to run into it because drivers don't like driving over uh, pieces of broken wood laying around. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to load the longs. And then what we'll do is we'll um, sell those, and then we're going to load the shorts, as there are different uh, styles to doing both. So the most important thing you got to remember, and this is in real life and in this game, is the positioning of your loader. So if you are working uh, really close with machines, you have to worry about weight balances. So if you're loading a truck that's really far away, like if you had to park way across the road, you'd want these tracks facing straight. So we'd want this straight side facing more of a 45 or direct. That way you have better weight distribution. If that truck is able to drive right alongside you close, it's not so much of an issue because you'll be able to load uh, just fine. So as I explained on the Feller Buncher video, the further you have to load away from your machine, like the longer the distance you got to reach, the more you'll want your tracks lined up straight um, with that. Always point your tracks towards whatever the heaviest angle that you're loading to, because that's where your weight distribution is going to be uh, settled at. So the other thing that I do, especially for new people, if you don't know any better, is the one thing you got to worry about is your tail swing. And your tail swing is how far the butt end of this machine sticks off the tracks. So as I turn, you can see that the butt end of this machine has about, you know, a few feet of clearance that stick out. So now you want to make sure wherever you park your truck and trailer, you're not within swing distance of hitting that truck or trailer. Um, in the game, obviously, it's not as big of a deal. In real life, it's a lot bigger of a deal so that you don't smash against somebody's expensive 
machine. So if you're brand new to the game and you just don't know what you're doing, I always say turn your machine so that the butt is sticking right out to where the road is from your position. Then you can go hop in your truck. And you want to drive the truck so it's all, well, not right up against it, but close, close to the butt end, or as close that feels reasonable. So you don't want to be right up against it like you're scraping it, but you want to be sort of close-ish. Right about there is probably good. That might even be a little bit too close. And sometimes some lotermen prefer you to be a little bit further away. Some people prefer you to be a little bit closer. So in this case, I'm going to say park about there. That's probably a, a good starting distance. The other thing you can do to make sure that you're uh, in a great starting position. So for long logs, I like to be lining this fifth wheel uh, hitch, which is this little round guy kind of up with the middle or the front side of the track. So if I pull ahead even a little bit more, probably about there would actually be good. So as you can see, this piece is kind of almost lined up with the uh, with the center circle oops, of this machine. I'm stuck between my machines here. There we go. Um, so this circly bit, the little spin swing motor, I try to line up uh, with the center of the fifth wheel hitch when I'm loading uh, long log specifically. Okay, so let's hop in the machine. So now, as you can see from the inside view, um, when I swing around, you'll see that I'm nice and close to my machine. I can see really close where my, uh, my bunks are. I got a really good range. This is even a bit close for me. So if you're in a loader and you don't like the positioning, you can either tell your truck driver to move, and if they don't want to move, you can just move yourself. So I usually back up, and then I'll rearrange my tracks, turn a little bit, and then just get a little bit more distance between it if I want that. So then you kind of got a little bit, little bit more distance. But as you can see now, um, when I swing my cab around, I'm not going to hit the back end of my machine against the trailer or the truck. That's really important. Now on different types of machines, some of them have a really close back, and then some of them have a really long butt on them, and you gotta be really careful. So every machine's a little bit different. So, uh, let's go over the grapple. So this is the uh, thumb rake grapple. As you can see, you have two claws, two very large claws on it. And you also have a stabilizer. Now this stabilizer, this small piece, is used for actually stabilizing the wood and balancing it in the grapple. So for instance, if I pick up a single log, um, what'll happen is if you grab it in a position where it's not even, the log will fall down. But if you have that stabilizer, you can actually push it down to keep the log more level. Now, the more logs you have in there, the more stable it's going to be. Trying to push down on a single individual little log is a little bit tricky. But as I lift that, you can see it falls almost straight down. But if I wanted to lift it, use that stabilizer to push down, and it'll actually kind of straighten that log out so that you're not dragging it on the ground or uh, falling out of your deck. So that's the purpose of that stabilizer. The other purpose of the stabilizer is if you're grabbing short logs, um, if you grab a big grapple, let's drive up here a little bit. Sometimes what will happen is if you grab a big grapple of short logs, there'll be a loose one on the top. As you can see, that the, the little one on the top is kind of floating around up there. So if you push that down on top, it'll actually keep it so it's stable and they won't move. Um, that's the other reason you'd use the stabilizer. So we're going to dump those back on the ground. We're not doing short logs just yet. So, um... For the most part, if you're using that stabilizer for long logs, you want that stabilizer facing the fat end of the logs, like the butts. So again, this is considered the butts of the logs, the fat piece, and then this is considered the tops of the logs, which are these little skinny bits on the top. So when you're using the stabilizer for loading logs, you want to make sure it's always facing the fat end of the logs. So if you want to pitch it to memory, the three claws on the outside always go towards the end of the pile, as opposed to the four facing the end, then your stabilizer is facing the wrong way. So make sure your stabilizer is on this end of the pile. Then what you want to do is basically just go in and grab them. Um, the further up you grab, the harder it's going to be hanging onto the logs. So usually what you want to do is get a little bit of a neck on it, similar to how we were teaching with the skitter. So you want to grab a little bit down from it, uh, and you don't want to grab, like, too many. You don't want to grab, like, this is a huge grapple, mostly for short logs. Um, so you don't want to fill this grapple right up. Otherwise, it's going to be a really, really heavy grab, and your machine will be really tipsy. 
So if you get like a decent grab, let's say that many, that's a good grab. As you can see, it's a little, it's a little point bouncy. So push that stabilizer down and it'll straighten those logs out so they sit nice and stable. Then we want to swing it all the way over here. And you want to turn your, uh, rotate your grapple a little bit. And you want it to be lined up so that it's kind of lined up straight with the, um, with the trailer. And then as you go down into the bunk, you can see on that tail end that all the logs are in the, uh, in the stakes. You can see on the front that they're in the stakes. Then you just got to really gently lower it down. Lift your stabilizer up. It'll release pr pressure off the logs. And then slowly open your grapple and let them fall down into the deck. Okay, so now, now that they've fallen down into the deck, it kind of looks a little wonky. It's not very nice in there. They're kind of laying a little crappy. It doesn't look very good. So what you can do is use your claw to kind of guide the logs around in there. And again, you want to be really gentle because this is a very powerful grapple. And those uh, stakes are not very strong. So you don't want to be doing anything too crazy. So just go really, really smooth. You can slide them around, and you can give them a little tap. If you don't like where it is, you want to try to kind of push them up against the side here. There we go. So that looks pretty good. So now what that does is it kind of creates a little bit of a cushion in there for your next pile of logs that you're going to drop. So, you know, they're kind of straight. It looks a little bit better. We got a gap here, but that's okay. We're going to throw some more logs in there. So we go back in. We're going to grab another little grab here. And again, we don't want to go too crazy. We're just going to get a little little bite out of this pile. And again, see, they're kind of loose and not looking great in there. So use your stabilizer to your advantage. Push that down. It'll help straighten out the logs. Sometimes you get a weird one. Just give it a flick. There you go. Again, lift it high so that you're above the stakes. Spin it around. And then watch your tops down there. Like, watch where your tops are. Because on the front... It's hard. It's, it's easy to see where you're right where you're looking, but make sure you watch those tops because while you're looking down there, those have to be lined up straight in the bunk when you go to drop. Because if they're off, they're going to hang up on the outside, and then your logs aren't going to be going in your uh, in your trailer. They'll be going all over the road, which you don't want. So make sure they're nice and lined up. Also, make sure your grapple is lined up straight with the uh, with the the uh, trailer. So that's another way to tell. As long as your grapple look straight lining up you'll you'll see your logs go in nice so we're going to go in again here again take the stabilizer up it'll take the pressure off the logs slowly open your grapple and you can just kind of let them roll out and see where they land there we go so it filled that little hole down there they kind of naturally fall into the openings properly which is nice the more stakes you have in your trailer you just got to watch uh your stabilizers because if you're pushing down really low it's sometimes easy to hit these stakes and you don't want to hit those stakes because that's how you wreck stuff there we go so we're going to go just nice and easy roll this around a little bit again they're kind of not sitting very nice i don't like it when like when they're sitting up like that that's not good so you can press down on them with your grapple real gentle um or you can dig a little bit and again even when you're digging just go really gentle don't you don't have to put a lot of force into it these logs will just roll around and kind of settle on their own so just put a little bit of pressure the more you smash into the cab and do that kind of stuff, um, the higher the chances uh, of wrecking stuff or throwing the poor truck driver around in the cab. Because as you can see, even the subtlest movements on that trailer, um, you'll see it in that cab for sure. Uh, okay, so uh, let's grab these last two longs, and then we have kind of those medium ones that we cut from the processor pile. So let's go and grab, I just want this little guy here. And then we got one more little guy uh, right here. So grab those. And again, this is time and experience will get you the speed and mobility of loading. So don't feel like you suck because it takes time to get good at doing this stuff. It's not easy and it's, uh, it's a lot of practice. So that looks pretty good. So now what happens here is we do have a bunch of kind of medium length logs, which are these kind of half, not really sure, long, not really short medium sized logs now there's not really a great place to put these so because we have a lot of stakes on this trailer it's really easy to just squeeze those into the load but if you're working on a trailer where there's only two sets of stakes like a pole trailer you kind of need to cradle them into the load it's called cradling so if i wanted to put those into this load 
Um, I would need to create more of a U-shape in the logs to allow those to fit in without slipping out the sides. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. It's really not that difficult. So what you want to do is you want to go from the back side and scoop kind of some of the middle logs if you can. Oh, we want to leave that one down there. Scoop one of these middle guys. Let's grab that one, sure. And just kind of roll it back. Roll it back, roll it back until it's almost touching this side right there. Perfect. There we go. We need a little bit more logs to do this properly, but if you have more logs in your deck, you can build it up a little bit better. Uh, let's see if we can grab... I just kind of want to get one from the middle here. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's what I want to do. Just kind of slip that up there. As you can see, I'm just kind of building uh, these little tiny walls on the sides. And as you can see, what will happen is it creates almost like a U in the middle. So as you can see, we're slowly kind of, we built kind of a hole in the center here. Again, once you have more logs, um, you can build it up a little bit better. But that looks pretty good. So let's just leave that right there. And then what happens is you can actually fit um, these logs here into that hole that we just created. So again, we're going to just lightly put the stabilizer down. And that beautiful little spot that we just created, we can actually just sprinkle these logs right into it. Just like so. You see how they sit in there all nice? Now you can actually do this with short logs as well. So if I wanted to put those short logs in here, um, you could sprinkle those in there as well. And then once you sprinkle a little bit in the center, you actually, if you have more long logs, which we normally would, you can just lay those long logs right on top of that and that's your deck. Uh, so for instance, why don't we clean up these little bits over here? So these were our kind of short, but not really short logs uh, that we weren't really sure what we were going to do with. So we're gonna go push those all together in a nice little pile and we'll grab those like this. Uh, so another technique which we're going to go over is penciling. So penciling is, uh, if you've never heard of it before, if you ever take a handful of pencils, um, like if you're in school, and they're out of line, you take them and you grab them and you slam them down on the desk and they all go straight in your hand if they're out of sorts. So there's two different techniques for penciling. Uh, in real life, the most common technique is something called under the boom. So under the boom is where you tilt the entire uh, section back and you bring it really close to the cab like so. You then tilt them to the side. Again, you want to tilt them back so that they're not actually touching uh, your boom. And then you open your grapple and let them sort of slide down like that. And then tighten your grapple and then you can do it again. I'm just going to move over here a little bit so we got some space. And that's called penciling. Now once you once they all slide down and you get them on the ground, I usually use my stabilizer and I push it down on top of them and that will actually keep it so that it's solid. And then you can tilt it back up and see how they're all in a nice line? So that's called under the boom penciling. It's a little bit harder and it works better with the with the shorter logs. Um, but you can do it with these longer ones. You just gotta be a little more careful. Uh, the other style, which it, it doesn't work super well in real life unless the wood is really, really light, but uh, it's called extending the boom penciling. So if you push your boom way, way out there, turn your grapple, and you can see they're all sliding out the bottom. So if you open your grapple just a teeny bit, they'll actually fall down to the ground. Then you can close your grapple. I push my stabilizer down on them again, flick it up, and then you'll see that they're all sitting kind of nicely in that, um, in that grapple. And again, you can do... Uh, however many times you really want to do it. But again, if you have really heavy logs, you can already see my machine's balance is not great because I have my boom extended so far. So if you're using really light, really light wood like what we got right here, you can get away with it. But if you're doing a full grapple of really heavy logs, yeah, you can forget that. It's not going to happen. So again, we're going to put these in with our mixed deck of wood here uh, and try to see if we got any room left in that little U that we created. And we're just going to really lightly sprinkle them right into that load. And they kind of... I don't really have a very big U, so we're kind of stuffling them in here. Oh, and as you can see, because I didn't keep my load straight when I put it on there, I have some that have kind of snuck on the other side of that stake, which is bad. So when that happens, which I'm glad it did so I can show you guys, 
All you gotta do is just reach down real gentle. Don't go crazy. Don't panic. There's no rush. And you just want a little bite. Slip it up real slow like that. And then you'll see it pop over the steak. And you just slide them this way. And then just let go and they'll fall nicely usually into the, uh, into the bunk. There you go. And then I give it just a little bit of a tap on the top here. Just a little light bump. To try to kind of arrange them a bit. As you can see, they kind of slip. These little tiny pieces are always an absolute nightmare because they just find their finite ways of sliding around all over the place. So you just kind of wiggle them around with your grapple until you they settle nicely in there. Uh, and then we'll come back and do shorts here. So what we'll do is we'll shut this guy off. Let's go sell these. So before we travel with our load of logs, we want to hit L for the locking straps. And that'll lock all the logs so they don't come whipping out and hit the back of the cab and all that. Uh, then we're going to turn around here. So I'm going to drive ahead right here. And we'll get this nice little turnaround road right here. And then we're going to take these to the mill and sell them. So every single mill on all of my maps has sell points. And these sell points uh, allow you to sell the wood entirely. So there's two different ways you can uh, unload the wood. So you can either unload the wood manually or you can unload the wood uh, just by running through the sell point. So if you're in these machine or in these log trailers, you'll see the logs because of the physics of this game aren't 100% perfect. You see how they're kind of jittering around all weirdly, and sometimes the logs will creep around. If they start to get really weird, just while you're driving, really quickly hit L twice, and that'll unlock them and then lock them again. And it'll just make sure that they don't wiggle out of your bunks. But if you see them doing weird stuff, double tapping L usually fixes that issue. So again, at every single mill site, we have um, a sell point. And generally, it, it looks different on some places compared to others, but generally my sell points look like this. So now you can either use a machine to manually unload that wood and lay it in these bunks to sell it, or if you're playing a multiplayer or you just don't want to take the time to unload, a lot of the times what we'll do is we will just drive through the sell point Park it in the center, and then walk up to this little exclamation mark and hit R to sell the wood. Bloop. And then the top right corner, you'll see the money, which it says $15,516 for that load of wood that we just did. Then make sure you turn your locking straps back off, and we're going to head back out, and then we're going to load some short logs. And short logs, to a lot of people, well... It's funny because I have some people tell me that short logs are way easier than long logs. And then I have some people that tell me short logs are way harder than long logs. So I think it's really a personal preference kind of dealio. But uh, I'll leave that up to you guys to determine what you like best. I'm just going to show you best practices on how we do it. Okay, so short logs. Now the parking for short logs is a little bit different than long logs. So when we did long logs, I showed you to park with that stake lined up, um, or with that fifth wheel lined up to the center of the machine. In this case, what we want to do, uh, let's make, our, make sure our machine's, our machine's in a great position. I'm really happy this uh, spot here because I can see my deck. I can see the log trailer really easily. So generally what you want to do, um, in real life, you never want to swing your grapple over the cab of a truck ever. With logs, without logs. Don't put your grapple over top of anything with a person in it because what can happen in real life is your hydraulics can fail and then this comes down and kills the poor driver or mangles his truck. So no matter what you're doing, and it's good practice to have it in the game too because if you ever decide to do this uh, in real life, you'll know. So always make sure when you're loading a truck that you're swinging your wood not over his cab. So for instance, if he was parked this way and my pile was over here, I would not want to swing this wood over the front of his truck because a piece could fall off. I've had all kinds of things happen uh, in real life while I'm operating where if there would have been a person or a, ca a truck underneath, it would have got crushed. So always make sure that you keep this grapple not where it can hit his truck. So if that requires you to have to swing all the way around in a circle to avoid his truck to load onto his uh, cab, or to load onto his trailer, then so be it. But it's very good practice not to uh, swing over the cab. That's just a, a fun point. So for this demonstration, I just want to show you guys where to park the trailer. So generally, you want the center of your stake 
to be kind of lined up with your grapple. So in this case, I would pull ahead and I'd tell the driver to stop right about, oops, right about there. That way, when you're loading, it's really easy to see this side of your stake and this side of your stake for the bunks, right? So then you know, whoops, you know, whoops, you know your wood is going in the right spot. Also make sure you don't do what I just did by hitting the stakes. Work really slowly and try not to hit those. In the game, you're not going to break them, but in real life, they will snap right off or bend over. So don't do that. Uh, so again, that's a great position to be in uh, to start because it's really easy to load uh, his truck. I always start with the front bunk first and then work my way towards the back. So we want to go in, grab a decent portion of logs. Now you don't have to grab a huge grapple. Um, make sure when you grab them that your claws are closing almost all the way shut. Um, if there's lots of space between them, there's a higher percent chance. So if I grab a really big, let's just grab a really oversized grab here. That's well, not really oversized, but see, that's actually okay. Um, if I push it though, let's see if I can even grab more here. If I push it and try to grab way too much, what will happen is it creates a gap in the bottom. You see that piece that just fell out? See how they kind of slip out? Um, and that happens in real life too, if you're not careful. Um, you need to have as clean and straight of a grab as you possibly can so i always say just grab a comfortable amount don't grab a crazy huge amount of wood like that is a perfect grab for me you could probably fit a little bit more in there but you know they're not going to fall at the bottom because your claws are crossing on the bottom uh, again you can do under the boom penciling if you want so to straighten up that pile these ones it's a pretty small grab so you could do the reach style but again as you lose that angle, your weight changes, so you start to get really tippy, which is bad. You don't want to tip your machine over, so we'll keep it about there. And then when you go in to uh, put them on there, you want to make sure you have a little bit of neck on each side of your stakes. So there's a little bit on this side, a little bit on this side. Um, if you want, I always try to load the front bunk a little bit closer to the cab. So like I said, we got quite a bit of room here, so I will load a little bit more uh, towards the cab. You can technically bring it up pretty close to that headache rack without it hitting. So that'll give you a little bit more space for the next bunk. Um, and you do have a lot of room on this side, so you can push it up there quite far. Okay. Uh, again, it's the same kind of style as the um, long logs here. Let's turn that light on so you can really see. Um, you want to roll them out, make sure that they're sitting in that uh, bunk nicely. And generally what I do when I'm loading is um, because the butts of these logs are all facing one side, I usually turn it around on my next grab. So as you can see, the butts are on this side. So when I go to grab the next pile, I'm going to turn it around so that the butts are facing on this side. And what that'll do is it'll keep even build on both sides as you go up. If you have all your butts on one side, what'll happen is you get kind of an arc where it's facing downwards on the other side. So for instance, this one will face the butts the opposite way. Uh, and I'm using the wrong side of my grapple, so we're gonna turn that around. There we go. Okay, so now the butts I'm gonna put on the opposite side instead. So I'll put the butts on this end. And what that'll do is it'll keep it nice and even as we build it up. And you can just slide your grapple around to kind of straighten them out how you feel. Uh, this one's just being comical with me here, so I'll push that back there. And like I said, you can get as creative as you want. You can just throw them on there and say, screw it, that's the end of my day. Or you can really get nitpicky and make the perfect load. It really is up to you. And if you're playing by yourself, uh, you can take your time. If you're playing a multiplayer, sometimes people get a little more stressed out. Cause just go, go, go. Uh, so again, see how I turned the butts so they're facing to the right this time? And we'll sprinkle these guys on top. I try to keep it as even as possible while I'm building up the the load again the slower you work the more chance you're not going to hit things um, I usually butt up these ends if I see them sticking out kind of weirdly I'll just kind of give them a little tap and we don't have a whole lot of short logs from our processor video here so I can't build a full bunk here um, so we're just going to go with what we got all right pretty straightforward so this is short log loading and some people prefer this they say it's a lot easier because you don't have the big long log flying around 
And some people say it's a lot harder because it's just you're dealing with a lot more smaller pieces that can go a little more wacky. So again, the key is just keeping it level as you build that deck up. Um, that allows you to put more wood on there and it allows it not to arc and look all weird. So uh, as you can see, these are five and a half meter logs. So I can fit another two sets of five and a half meter logs on this trailer as well. Um, as I explained, there are different types of trailers in this list. So for instance, this is the one we're using now with multiple stakes. You can do one that has only two, so you can set two sets. Um, this one only fits pretty much five meter logs, but you guys can play around with all the different ones. Uh, this is the one that only has two sets of stakes. We usually use this only for long logs, which works fantastically for that. But you guys can do whatever works for you, and you guys will learn all the different techniques uh, as you play along. So this is the basics of loading. Um, again, there's different styles all over the world of loading, of logging, of all that kind of stuff. But this little video, video series kind of just gives you um, the basics of how to get started and how to get logging. And the rest I will leave up to you guys and your creative imaginations uh, on how you want to log. Cool, guys. Well, that's the end of this series. I'm glad you followed through. If you guys have any comments or anything, just leave them at the bottom of the videos and I will respond. If not, join us on our Discord. We have a great community that's willing to help out everybody. Um, the link for that is also in the bottom of this video. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. See ya.